Today, we invite a local book club to join us in the studio to talk about the New York Times bestselling book, Michelle Obama's Becoming. The Aware Show starts right now. This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dee Dee Sharp, and this is the award-winning Aware Show, and we're glad to have you right there with us. We're excited to bring you an amazing program. In the spotlight, the Michelle Robinson Obama memoir, Becoming. Her inspiring story is a New York Times bestseller. Becoming chronicles her journey from the south side of Chicago as a little girl to becoming a graduate of Princeton University and Harvard Law School. From there, being hired as an attorney, next meeting and marrying Barack Obama, and culminating in the historic groundbreaking years from 2009 to 2017, serving as our First Lady of the United States. Now, there's a lot to her story and her journey, and she tells it all in her new book. At the same time, she's inspiring you to tell your story. We're going to talk about this and a whole lot more. And joining us in the studio to do it for an Aware Book Club special highlighting becoming are my guests from Readers and Writers Incorporated. We have Mamie Webb Hickson, UWF Assistant Professor of English, Joan Henderson, retired social worker. Claudette Chapman, who's also a retired social worker. Shirley Holmes, retired educator. And also joining us, we have Katie Deneen, University of West Florida, 2019 alumna. And Chrissy Banda, a University of West Florida student. Hi, women. Hi. Hi. Hello, and welcome Hi. to the Aware Show. We're glad to have each and every last one of you Thank joining you. us for Thank this you. show. Thank you. So excited what we're doing here today, talking about this book. Yes. And as I mentioned, there's like over 400 pages to go yes. through yes. and a whole lot in between, <laughs> in the, between the cover of this book. Right. Before we dive into that, I want to give you a chance, Mamie, to tell us about Readers, Readers and Writers, Inc., Yes, I-N-K, Inc. <laughs> I -N -K. Because we consider ourselves writers. Every December we write something. All of the other months of the year, for the past 22 years, in mm -hmm. fact, 1997, we have been together. We came out of the African American Heritage Society going around reading from When Black Folks Was Colored. And one of the members said, hey, we're calling ourselves Readers and Writers, Inc. Don't we need to read some books ourselves? So we started with Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. And now we're all the way up to 2019. And in February, we read Becoming by Michelle Obama. I love it a lot. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. But I want to also give you a chance to tell us a little bit about one of your recent events that you did. We were able to take our aware cameras out and get some video of that. It was your book club actually in action. Want to exactly. tell us a little bit about what was going on in that video as we roll it? That was actually our March book club meeting. We meet uh, usually the fourth weekend in each month. So we met to discuss uh, a writer, a local writer or a local poet, actually, who now lives in Atlanta and her name is Melanie Neal, Melanie Waldrop Neal. She has a book called Vanilla Syrup. So we all chose one of her haikus, one of her poems, to read aloud and talk about it. And that's what we like to do, just get together and some, sometimes we start with the book and roll our way into social issues and mm. personal issues. Most of the time, that's what we do, but often we'll start with the issue and someone will say, don't we need to discuss the book today? So that particular book <laughs> meeting, we were able to read a lot of poetry. Oh, nice. Yes. You had a nice little group there, too. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. We have 18 members, mm -hmm. but often uh, those dates that we choose for book club meetings just aren't good for everybody. So we usually have anywhere from 8 to 18 who meet with us. And as you can see from our book cover... We have a lot of books that we have read in oh, those yeah. 20 years. We've even gone uh, to, where was it? Tuscaloosa, Monroeville. 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 Well, for the anniversary of To Kill a Mockingbird. Nice. So we, are, we are readers. We love to read. I see. And in doing this, I'm sure y'all make the words come off the pages. Oh, uh, we try to. Because you're probably <laughs> dissecting, diving deep in there. We do. We try to. We try to. Okay, very good. And I know that uh, Becoming came up on your list of books to read because... 
it's a bestseller and it's from exactly. our first lady, former first lady. Yes, yeah, yeah. so, so many of us admire her and we were just delighted that she put a book together for us to hear her, her voice. And that's mm -hmm. what I like about the book Becoming, the fact that it has her voice. And that's, you know, I teach a class at UWF called Black Women Writers and I have two of my students here. And that's what we do. We talk about identity and voice and intertextuality. She does exactly what most of the black women authors that we read, what they do. They talk about manhood. They talk about invisibility. They talk about all those themes that many African-American writers write about and what Toni Morrison says should be one of the characteristics of an African-American novel. And I was just amazed and delighted mm -hmm. to see that Michelle Obama's book does that, that mm -hmm. oral quality. Mm -hmm. I remember marking something she said, I'm telling you, this is some real stuff. Or, oh yes. no, this stuff hurt. <laughs> she didn't even say hurts. She talked to us in the vernacular in that line. Or I should say she talks to us in the vernacular in that line. This stuff hurt. And then she can go from that to something so eloquent, so lofty, mm -hmm, uh, something about the rubric of his personality. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I marked all of these words. I was just <laughs> enthralled by her vocabulary yes, and yes, thinking, yes. gee, you know, I wish I could write as well as she. Uh-huh. So... Very good. Well, you do, but anyway, that's another topic. <laughs> one, other time. <laughs> one other time. I want to go to some of those um, words in terms of a quote that she uh, mentioned off the top. That way I can give each and every last woman here a chance to answer a question that's going to yeah. come from this quote. Becoming is never giving up on the idea that there's more growing to do. That's a quote from Michelle Obama's book. And now here in the studio, I want to give each of you ladies a chance to tell us what becoming means to you. And we'll start over here to my right and we'll give you a chance to, to tell us, Joan. Becoming to me means seeking knowledge uh, until uh, the day of my death. That's deep. Wow. Uh Wow. Yes. That's a poem. What, it, what, is. What, it really is. That is awesome. Where do you go from there? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Come you on, let's hear here. you, Claudette. Okay, um, we go here. Becoming to me means to become free. I think Good. I'm becoming freer. I was so rigid in earlier years, but now I'm freer to do things like taking tap dance lessons mm -hmm. and uh, ukulele lessons and just having fun and enjoying my life. So I'm becoming freer and becoming freer and becoming happier. I love that. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, and for those who haven't read the book, the opening uh, says, or Michelle Obama says, we're all often asked, what do you want to be? Mm -hmm. And the end of that is when you grow up. Right. And our point is, it's not what we want to be. We're constantly being, we're constantly mm -hmm. becoming. It's not finite. So mm -hmm. in 2004, I don't know if you remember, book club members, we actually were given our writing assignment for December of that year, Who Am I? Yes. So yes. I thought yes. about mm -hmm. Who Am I? And I, mm. I remember writing a poem cool. and I talked about who I was, who I think people think I am, who is it I want to become. So I'm constantly becoming something. I might be the director of the writing lab, a book club member, a member of a sorority, a member of everything, but I'm still becoming. There's yes. no stopping me. Yes, <laughs> no. Just, no. I love that. At all. I love yeah. that. You never stop learning. No. Right. And I like how you, you talk about how we'll ask our kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? And that's that finiteness that you're talking right. about. But it's not about what you want to be when you grow up. It's what are you going to be as you live your life? Right. Because it's going to change right. as we're going to hear a little bit more about Michelle and how she describes it. I want to turn over here to you, Shirley. Well, what's, what's becoming to you? Becoming means that you're constantly growing, mm -hmm. that you are a different person from what you were in your earlier years. And uh, your thirst for knowledge never ends. I like it. Katie? Mm -hmm. I think becoming for me is acknowledging the past and finding hope in it, and also the future, but being present in the moment. That's good too. Yes, 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 <laughs> Chrissy? Becoming has like relinquished me from the pressure of just being one thing. Like, we don't really have to be labeled by one thing. We're, like, always changing and always evolving because we're multifaceted. One thing that we're particularly interested in this year might not be the same next year. And, like, becoming is kind of giving you that freedom mm -hmm. and that confidence to actually just continue evolving. You're right. I love that, yes. too. Yes. I, I love yes. becoming being an active verb. It's yes. something that's yes. ongoing, as we're all saying here. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, you know, I'm just going to just... Keep gloating. Becoming for me is knowing you're a winner long before you get an award. It's Ooh, just becoming. Awesome. It's yes. winning all the time. Yes. It's knowing that you're a winner because that's 
not letting someone else set your bar for you because yeah, you do exactly. that. And yeah. so um, I absolutely love becoming that it's something that you haven't just done and it's over. Yeah. That just like and you said, you, it's ongoing. I yes. <laughs> and, 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 and to what Joan said, to you die. Exactly. <laughs> you Becoming to you die. When I first saw the title, I thought the title of the book was Becoming Michelle Obama. Yes. When actually mm -hmm. the title is Becoming, and this is the author's name. Yeah. But as I read the book, I thought it is. Mm -hmm. The title of the book should be Becoming yes. Michelle Obama because the Michelle Obama we start out with not, is, is not, not the same, same Michelle not the same. Obama that we end with. Mm -hmm. She yeah, was not absolutely. the first lady, but she was being groomed through all these pages. All these pages. Oh. Through all of her life I to love become it. Michelle Obama. Mm -hmm. I love it. And before we go any further into the book, and Michelle, I know everybody exactly. keeps going, let's get in, let's get in. <laughs> we're going, we're going. <laughs> but I just want to say, we want to hear from our first lady herself on what becoming wow. means. Mm -hmm. One of the things I learned is that life is an evolutionary process. We are evolving. We will change and grow every year. And I hope that I never stop becoming. It's a title of promise. This is a journey. I'm 54 years old. I'm, I'm not done yet. I am still becoming who I am. It's not necessarily a commercial about the book, <laughs> but we do want to acknowledge that that yeah. is a part of the trailer. And I, I love what she's saying. And she's saying, you know, it's a, a promise. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's um, an opportunity to think to yourself that I am becoming and yes. I am mm -hmm. is very active. Yes, <laughs> very <laughs> you know, and are saying mm -hmm. that. Can we have some reaction from what we just heard from our first lady about her the, idea of becoming. Back to the I am, it's interesting that am is uh, considered a B verb, an equal mm -hmm. sign. Mm -hmm. So on the left and on the right, same thing, same people. But becoming is considered a linking verb, so it links us to something else. I am becoming. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to put Mamie over there. I can put something else, all the mm. nouns that you all use, or even the adjectives that we put over there. I just find that really interesting, especially in light of the title of the, the book and mm -hmm. what she just said. Mm -hmm. I think in, in looking at this just off the top and in general, this is a very relatable book oh, yeah. yes. in so yes. many ways. Mm -hmm. And you know, in an hour show here on The Aware, right show, we're going to be scratching the surface of how really? deep this really is. We can talk about the vivid language and how she writes, the beautiful verbiage, the pithy mm -hmm. words that you're talking mm -hmm. about um, that shows her intellect, mm -hmm. but yet being down home, you know, mm -hmm. from the south side of Chicago and mm -hmm. explaining her childhood and, and bringing it on out. And it, it, it really is one of those books where her life is coming off the pages. And if you have the mm -hmm. opportunity to actually hear her telling you in the audio book, it's even better because you yes. it's like she's having a conversation with mm -hmm. you telling you about her life. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's just really a very deep, relatable story. Mm -hmm. And so um, what I want to do is just go ahead. We can dive in now. <laughs> and we'll start with um, just looking at the first division of the book, because it's kind of broken down into three divisions, um, and that's no secret. So if you haven't read the book, it's not like you're gonna lose anything by watching the show, but I think you'll gain everything and it'll probably make you want to go read the book all the more. So if you look at the first division, you're talking about becoming me, and becoming me is becoming Michelle Obama, of mm -hmm. course, and that's chapters like one through eight, and in that, she's talking about her childhood, her sibling life with her brother uh, growing up, and obviously she loves him a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna get into, so you're gonna have her parents, her brothers, her other relatives who were around her. Extended family all Extended the way. family, mm -hmm. and then her going off to Princeton. So we've probably got when she was a little girl mm -hmm. on to when she goes to college in these first eight chapters. What's jumping off the pages? I didn't get for past you? just opening it up when she to all the people who have helped me become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The very first You're thing You're talking about came, the preface. I, I didn't <laughs> get past the preface <laughs> before I was, right, was going, wow, mm -hmm. that she would acknowledge all of these people, which mm -hmm. says that we don't become who we are mm -hmm. by ourselves, mm -hmm. that you have all of these people, the, my circle of strong women, and all of who lift me up. Mm -hmm. I, I think I stayed there going, oh, Oh, wow. thinking about all the strong women in yeah. my life who are still helping me to mm -hmm. become. 
Mm -hmm. You can yeah. really see her strong sense of relationships within yes. like the first mm -hmm. section of just yes. like how much she prizes her female group of friends, her family. Mm -hmm. um, on page 50, she talks about the first boy that she kissed, and she says, it felt like my future was just beginning to arrive, which reminded me of Their Eyes Are Watching God, that intertextuality of, you know, your first exposure to love. And all these different relationships just follow through throughout her life of she is so dedicated to her family yes. and to motherhood and to sistership. And um, that's what I really took away was, was was her strength in that sector of her life. There's a lot of strength in what you just said because like Mamie alluded to a little bit earlier as well, you're gonna see that thread throughout yeah. her book, mm -hmm. how all of these things that are happening to her just kind of layer mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. to prepare her for the next thing that she's mm -hmm. going to become. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. And I thought that was amazing, so I'm glad you brought mm -hmm. that up because that struck that chord for me. Oh yeah, me too. And on yes. uh, 204, I was just gonna throw this quote in, we live by the paradigms we know. Mm -hmm. And that's what she does from beginning to end. She gives us the paradigms of her life. And there's something called a paradigmatic shift. She doesn't really, ha I guess she does in a way have that kind of shift from uh, one part of her life to the next part of her life. But all of these paradigms mm -hmm. she has lived through and lived by and they prepared her to become the first lady, yes. even though she didn't even realize that that is what was happening a lot to of it. It's And it's interrelated too. And it's mm -hmm. amazing that I wrote the same, the same really? one. I, we, li <laughs> we live by the paradigm. <laughs> that's great. That's great. That, that we know, so that yeah. so that that did resonate. Yes. Yeah. Through the entire book. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Joan. I felt that a lot of her strength came from her father. Yeah. Was he had MS, and um, he, you know, he never talked about his illness. Mm -hmm. He just went on about doing what he needed to do, paying bills and mm -hmm. taking care, care of the family. family. Mm -hmm. so. I, I love the relationship with her family, yes. and mm -hmm. I really love the relationship she had with her brother, Craig. Yes. yes. I mean, they had a loving, I mean, even from when she was a little baby sitting on his lap, he was he was taking care of his mm -hmm. sister he day very one, protective yes. very her. protective yes. of right. her. Right. And I could tell that she had a very deep-rooted love mm -hmm. in her mm -hmm. family, mother and father, mm -hmm. and then with Craig, her sibling, and then the family that lived around them, mm -hmm. the aunt and the uncle Robbie. and mm -hmm. the grandpa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, she just really had a very loving, mm -hmm. concrete, mm -hmm. solid relationship yes, where indeed. she could talk and, and, and really be comfortable in that environment growing mm -hmm. and becoming. Mm -hmm. I, I just love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it's gonna parlay later on in her life, but I don't wanna get too far ahead yeah. if somebody wants to say anything else about her, the early childhood, the parenting, the sibling, because that's going to parlay into Princeton in just a second, what I just mm -hmm. said. Well, you know, I love the fact that they had family life, you know, like on the weekends, they or if they had gotten really good grades, they would have pizza mm -hmm. or ice cream. It's a special treat for them. And it seems like they did so many family-related things mm -hmm. that well, made a difference ahead, in their Katie. life. Go ahead, Katie. One thing I felt really relatable, I felt very relatable reading um, Becoming Me and getting to know little Michelle, Michelle Robinson, mm -hmm. because I'm going through a stage of my life where, where I'm, you know, a college graduate. I'm, I'm at the same age as she was mm -hmm. when she's talking about this, but she also has this perfectionist streak in her where she mm -hmm. wants to achieve mm -hmm. and she wants best. to do just the best that mm -hmm. she can. Mm -hmm. And in some ways it's her strength. She's able to like be very dedicated and be very articulate and smart. But in another end, she's all, like always judging herself and always like, you know, trying to strive for other people's acceptance. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's wonderfully relatable to me because I watch as she like goes through this perfectionist streak and then is able to overcome it mm -hmm. and, and feel, you know, have her victories and be comfortable with them and happy with them. Good, yeah. I like yeah. that. And then you know what else is relatable? Her relationship with her mother. I've mm -hmm. never read a memoir by another first lady. That, that's the other thing. Mm -hmm. When I was reading this book, I thought, well, maybe I need to meet, read more about who they really are as people. <laughs> that's good. Not mm -hmm. as first like ladies, that. because mm -hmm. that's what I 
took away from this book. This lady is, is like me. I'm like exactly. that too. Mm -hmm. We are so much alike. She's smarter. I want to be more like her. <laughs> but she is so much like so There's many other women. There's only one Barack Obama. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm messing with you, baby. I grew up on the south side of Chicago. There you go. I you know who you were. I could identify with a lot of the oh, things she talked yes, about. Yes. Chrissy? I think uh, the Becoming Me uh, segment of the book is really specific for people our age because mm -hmm. that's where we are. Mm -hmm. um, we can relate most to, well, not most, because I know you guys have become me. Don't be trying to say we all. We don't hear the season of the show. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're just at that stage. We're just gotcha. kind of uh, cross that threshold of, uh, you know, identifying ourselves, you know, what, what is it that we're passionate about? Um, who is it that we are? Um, and that's why that part of the book is maybe the most important part for us because mm. we have yet to become us or mm -hmm. yet to become more. I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. That's you're where on. your stage of life is. Mm -hmm. that, that makes so you're much sense. Exactly. That. That's your season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. um, two things before we go to the next section of this book that I wanted to make sure we put in here was the counselor when she got ready to consider going off mm -hmm. to school, mm -hmm. the high school counselor who told her that she thought she was probably being a little ambitious mm -hmm. thinking about going to Princeton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My daughter encountered that. The mm. woman tried to get her toward uh, cosmetology and things like that when she was taking all these college prep courses. Mm -hmm. She said, well, that's not my interest, you know. Mm. So many times, if the child is not vocal enough, they can be put into an area they really don't want to be in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She okay. was vocal, Michelle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And, and, and a mother, too, surprisingly. You know, mm -hmm. vocal yes. in her own kind of quiet way. She was mm -hmm. quiet, quiet, a quiet yes. storm. Mm -hmm. And that was exactly what I was getting ready to say. Oh. We're thinking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still on. Y'all discussed on this before. <laughs> I know, <laughs> no, because I had highlighted my mother, Marion, showed me how to think for myself mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. and to use my voice. Yes. And that's important because she got important. that very, very mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. to think for herself yeah. and to use her voice so that she could overcome mm -hmm. and okay. become. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> and it was like she said, I'll show you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's what she did too because we know she went on to Princeton. <laughs> and that's what I want to talk about lastly in this part of this section. And we can come back. Um, was I talked to Mamie this morning on the phone, this is my girl. <laughs> um, but I was telling Mamie that I thought it was very good that Michelle had had that foundation as she was growing up as a little girl to be loved by her family. Yes. And, and so that when it was time for her to let go to little first love David mm -hmm. at the steps of Princeton, she was okay with it. Mm -hmm. She was she was okay with, you know, I care. He wasn't okay <laughs> with it, you know. But I think that she had her sights set on going to Princeton, mm -hmm. proving herself mm -hmm. to that counselor exactly. and to herself. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't going to let anything get in her way. Not love, not, not the puppy love, not any of that. Mm -hmm. And so often I think, um, I know I did, you always let your your, your first loves or your, your boyfriend, you, you can kind of let some of that stuff get in your head That's when true. you're a young mm -hmm. girl and derail sometimes your, your plans, your, your, your good things for life, but I think having that foundation with her family mm -hmm. kept her and helped her stay her course. Yes. And, I, and I thought it was funny just rounding that out, that David would, would try to call her the next day after leaving her with her, her, he and the father go over to a hotel and spend the night. And then David calls her back the next day and say, before we leave and go back to Chicago, I just wanted to know if you wanted to go out and have breakfast or lunch. And she's kind of like thinking of probably to herself, like, no, I kind of said bye to you yesterday. <laughs> but you know, think that's necessary. It comes from the, the parents who, yeah. she says, talk to her and her brother as if they were adults. Mm -hmm. right. Allow yes. them right. to make decisions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Allow them like to that. think. As you were Craig, Craig mm -hmm. had to make that same kind of a decision about the girl he was going over that's to right. her house mm -hmm. in the book. Right. And she, the mother allowed him to make the decision right. for himself. Right. Of course, she was probably petrified that he'd make the wrong decision, <laughs> but, but she had to let him make it make nonetheless. It, make it anyway. That's exactly. right. <laughs> Going on to, to our um, second segment of the book was Becoming Us. And in this particular segment that we're going to show you on the screen here, so you can just kind of read along, this particular section of the book was chapters 9 through 18. Mm -hmm. and you can see the pages there. And in these... Uh, chapters, you're going to talk about or, or read about meeting and marrying Barack, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. her being a parent herself, becoming mm -hmm. a parent, mm -hmm. and then campaigning, and then finally becoming a U.S. president, mm -hmm. uh, a first lady oh, yeah. herself, okay. but him becoming president and her life mm -hmm. with that. So, what, what jumped off the pages during this section of the book. This was my favorite section. Mine I mean, too. I'm sorry, ladies. I know y'all are young. Y'all you found your season there. But this is, was my, my, my deal right here. Handle so delicately and so responsibly. Yes. Her writing mm. about this love story yes. mm. was not graphic. It was sensible and sensitive. And I just fell in love with Barack. I again. did, too. Yes. 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 She recognized oh. the differences in their upbringing. Exactly. And, you know, he could not understand how she felt about certain things, like her wanting family time as much as she did because he knew his mother loved him, right. but she had always been away from him for long right. periods of time. Mm -hmm. And then on page oh, 171, it, it says, you find ways to adapt if you're in it forever there's really no choice. Mm -hmm. So they found ways to adapt mm -hmm. uh, to each other, which mm -hmm. I thought was marvelous. And when she said that, you do find ways to adapt mm -hmm. if you're going to be in it for forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was, awesome. that was an awesome... Mm -hmm. See, y'all jumped all the way over there. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, just right there where... They we, can, we can move past the they met. I love I love how yes. they met and all yes. that kind of mm -hmm. thing. But the proposal... Oh, oh that the yes. arguing <laughs> and the bickering and, you know, Barack yes. just had her going and they were like a, two attorneys, you know, <laughs> fighting over why they should be. She was uh, fighting why we should be married. He's fighting mm -hmm. why they shouldn't be married. And then the tray comes and boom, because the rest of this yeah. tray, <laughs> read the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's see the importance of marriage. Yeah. yeah. It was so but he, he, but yes, he teased he her. He teased her. He, he was did. like, he I did. bet that shuts you up. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing I like about yeah. the book, she humanized herself yeah, and yeah. him uh, yeah. so much. I mean, I, I felt that when we were first introduced to him, he seemed to be that kind of person anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But then to read about it in her yes. words, mm -hmm. was to see, oh, I'm, I'm right. He is personable. She did yeah. throw him up under the bus a couple of times. Think so? More than a couple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she talked about him being messy. Oh yeah. She talked. I mean, and she messy, was messy, messy, messy. For that. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she talked was... about time not meaning anything to her. He said, "I'll be right home." Oh, and that's yes. like the hours later. Yes. 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 And, she, and she talked about his smoking. Yes. yes. She didn't like that. About it, him being it, so smart and yes, so dumb. Yeah. You know, it's so disappointing that people criticize her for, for talking about him yes. that so way. Why? Mm -hmm. that, what, what's wrong with that's, humanizing the president? That was the relatable stuff. Yes. That's, that's, that's the... To me, those are the nuances that you, you share about somebody that only you would know. Exactly. And if he was okay with her telling it, why does anybody else have a problem? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Katie, yeah. you well, and Chris page... are being real quiet over okay. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on page 211... She talked about my goals mostly involve maintaining normalcy and mm -hmm. stability, mm -hmm. and uh, but those would be Barack's. Mm -hmm. We're grown better by recognizing this and letting it be one yin, one yang. No, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 that. Yeah. yeah, I, I like crave that. routine and order, and he did not. Mm -hmm. And she recognized that. Yes, mm -hmm. she recognized that. <laughs> he could live in the ocean, and I needed the boat. I, that was... <laughs> I love that. Yes. Yes. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good. Anything else, ladies? Katie? Yeah, I, I just think that, that, you know, she didn't want him to be in politics. No, not right. really. She did not want him to be in politics mm -hmm. at all, because she mm -hmm. wanted that stability, that routine. She knew if he's in politics, he's going to be away from the home a lot. Well, he didn't yes. really belong to her anymore. He belonged no, to... And, and, and right. he, no, and he he never did. He belonged to something higher. Yeah. That's what yeah. she's always saying, is mm -hmm. she married a man who had big dreams, mm -hmm. big dreams and and was going to go achieve them. And so she had to adapt. She had to, yes. to learn adapt. ways right. to, to be comfortable mm -hmm. within her family unit and also with him in his hole, his messy, mm -hmm. his, his messy, messy hole. hole. But he was always <laughs> productive in that hole. Yes. I don't know how he did it, but he always came out with something good. Mm -hmm. The audacity of hope, the letter, yes. uh, the, the mm -hmm. book that about his father. father. I mean, yes. he, hey, the whole worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting the whole new. No, <laughs> can be but you know what else about the becoming us section? These connections that we saw when Barack Obama was president 
we found out about mm -hmm. those connections. She was a good friend of Jesse Jackson's mm -hmm. daughter. Yes. Mm -hmm. We found out how she met or how they met. I think she actually met, uh, what's her name? Jared? Santita. Oh, Jared. Valerie Jared. Valerie Jared. Valerie Jared. Valerie Jared. Valerie Jared. Valerie. Michelle was her friend first, and she introduced him. Her rather to, to Barack, Barack Obama. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just interesting finding out about all these it connections. It was. Mm -hmm. All and these people that, that they knew. And yeah. Valerie Jarrett was born in Iran. Mm. She was born where? In Iran. Oh, oh wow. Yes. Uh -huh. I didn't read that in there. Yes, no, but I... <laughs> you looked it up. Looked you looked it up. up. <laughs> <laughs> she went deep on us. <laughs> Anybody else? I was just going to add that um, her transparency is what I think is so important. Mm. Um, I don't think it's fair that people would criticize her for, mm -hmm. you know, being yeah. open and honest about those yeah. things because it's what makes this so amazing. Is like, you know, you can think of Michelle Obama as just almost an alien of just how amazing she is, but when you see stuff like that, you just begin to see that she's so relatable. Like, mm -hmm. there's a piece of her in each and every single one mm -hmm. of us. You're right. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, yes, that's good. <laughs> I'm just leave it right there because I could go deeper, but I'm going to leave it there. Let's go to the third portion, and then we'll get into some of the issues uh, that we might want to uh, bring to surface here with the book. Not that we had issue, but just things that we want to discuss. So the third segment of the book, Becoming More, chapters 19 through 24, and covers the pages there on the screen, and they cover life in the White House, mm -hmm. being the First Lady being a part of a two-term presidency, and then finally becoming. Mm -hmm. What jumped off the pages within these chapters? Anybody want to go first? Uh, Everybody's looking now. Um, They're like... <laughs> yeah. Right, I yeah, gotta... um, the major oh, adjustment it takes. She says in the first line, there's no handbook to for an incoming first lady. So mm -hmm. she has to kind of develop her own image of what her being not only the first lady, but the first black first lady, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So she, and she cont continues to say that she's struggling to, you know, one, go above and beyond. So she sets a good precedent. And then two, like how does she manage being first lady and mother? How does she mm -hmm. manage being an icon and also still a woman and, and a human? And just kind of how the foreignness of the museum-like uh, White House slowly becomes her home and she slowly be, be or she's able to um, develop a plan and really implement ideas about health and education and women and girls and um, military families and able to really make an impact the way that she wants to and develop that with her voice. You did a really good job of summarizing all of those <laughs> chapters. <laughs> the, the epilogue jumped out at me. Mm -hmm. There are portraits of me and Barack now hanging in the National Portrait Gallery in Washington a fact that humbles us both. I doubt that anyone looking at our two childhoods, our circumstances would ever have predicted we'd That's land true. in those halls. The paintings are lovely, but what matters most is that they're there for young people to see. And, and I think just it made there. a lot of young people to be able to have dreams and aspirations yes. right. that were far beyond exactly. what they would have had before. Yes. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. What jumped on was th page 361 on friendships. And when she talks about friendships between women, as any woman will tell you, are built of a thousand small kindnesses mm -hmm. like the swapped back and forth and over again. And mm -hmm. she talked about keeping her, her friends close and having some real good true friends mm -hmm. that she knew were true friends and how much she valued the the friendships, and I think with the book club group and everybody else, how we mm -hmm. value our friends. I love yes, the point yes. by Roz, you know, yeah. that, sister uh, friends. our sister friends, our, how we value the sister friends and that they truly are there for you. Mm -hmm. Even the first lady, mm -hmm. you know, they mm -hmm. need Joan, their friends. do you have anything you want to add? Um, In the third part of the book okay. that jumped off the pages for you? Yes, on, on another, uh, the secret agent service protection. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And the names oh, yes. that were given to each oh, yeah. of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Barack was renegade. Uh, Sh Michelle was renaissance. <laughs> the girls, Malia, was radiance. Sasha was rosebud. And her mother was rain dance. <laughs> and she uh, was a big part of their family. Yes. yes. In and, the White House. And uh -huh. she was not accustomed to you know, them saying ma'am to her. Mm -hmm. you know, they would say, yes, you know, ma'am. Mm -hmm. 
They, I, was... And in there, they're telling her um, the very first day when Barack had become president and they're pulling up with the motorcade, I like the secret a secret agent turning to her and saying, your life is about to change. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 That was big. It was like, that boom, was. you know, right. Right. and it did. Yes. <laughs> she yes, probably she didn't did. realize that as much. Yeah. <laughs> but she knew she had to climb her way, you know, uh, into favor mm -hmm. because, you know, being an African-American And there were so many lady. negative things that had yes. been said about her. Mm -hmm. And speaking of being an African-American, she was very transparent about her racial identity mm -hmm. throughout yes. the book. I noticed that. Yes. yes. That, mm -hmm. that she didn't just dismiss it or ignore it. She even talked about Barack in terms of his race. She took us to a human place and a race place and to a feminine place mm -hmm. in her book. And that's mm -hmm. what I appreciated about the book as well. It's a memoir, but sometimes I felt as if I were reading about a fictional character experiencing a real life, mm. when really it's the other way around. It's a real person giving us a real life stories and reminding us all that we have stories too. Well, it's not only her story that she's telling. I mean, mm -hmm. she's telling the story of America. When she yes, goes campaigning, yes, she gets yes. to know America on yes, a very new level, she does. on a very that. personal yes. level. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, through her sharing that, you know, we learn about these different military families. We learn about the kids at different schools that were terribly shot. And we learn about these dark sides of America as well as the beautiful sides That's of true. America. Mm -hmm. We learn about the foreign sides of America, exactly. too, like our allies abroad. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm, I think it really opens up, whoever reads this book, really opens you up to looking at America not only through awesome. your bubble, whatever's local, but looking at it through the lens of an Idaho farmer and through the the mm -hmm. lens of a Vietnam oh, vet. I love that yeah. she did yeah. that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. good. That's yeah. a good point. Y'all yeah. have some great yeah. points. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me excited about it. Meeting the queen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. yes. oh, but weren't they critical <laughs> of her what, by not having yeah. anything on her arms and the fact that didn't she hug the queen? Or, she touched her. Uh, she touched her. And that wasn't done. That was emotion to me from yes. reading this book. Exactly. Yes. Well, I think the queen really liked her because she was yes. so open. Yes. And, uh, and, the, and, and I love the fact that they went back to visit her before they left the, the, yes. the, the, the yeah. White House. Yeah. Yeah. And the queen was like, I don't, you know, basically telling her, she didn't say this quite, but, but in my mind, I was in visioning the queen yes. of England telling her, I don't care what they told you about etiquette, sit where you want to, because yeah, they right. had told her that mm -hmm. she needed to sit in the front of the, the, the motor pool right. and let Barack sit in the back with the queen. Right. And the queen was like, I don't care what they told you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you can sit here with me. Right. <laughs> so right. they were friends. Yes. And I love that. Mm -hmm. The queen yeah. became real to us <laughs> through this book. Because yeah. a lot of times you think yes. of her as being that person. Yes. That, Sitting up on the, on the pedestal. Right. <laughs> that spirit I want to talk connected. to you a little bit about yes. your, your uh, friends with... Um, uh, African friends and how they took. So um, the, to I'd have meeting. I'd had like a conference call, a makeshift conference call um, with two of my friends. One of them is from Tanzania and one of them is from Malawi, where I'm from too. And I was just trying to get their two cents on what they felt about becoming um, from an African, well, East African woman's perspective. Um, and what we were thinking to each other was, okay, do we have a Michelle Obama? You know, of our own. And we couldn't help but feel um, that we're not, um, we don't have the side of them. You know, we don't have a memoir. We can't know them personally. So it's been really hard to fall in love with them. We're not um, as knowledgeable about their uh, campaigns. Like, you know, she has Let's Move and I could tell you when it started and everything. But then I was thinking, okay, I, what do I know about my first lady? Um, I know she has a campaign called Beautify Malawi. But we were just thinking that, um, we wish that we had this depth of knowledge depth about knowledge. our first lady so that wow. we could fall in love with her, so that we could support her, so that you know she could be a role model for us. Because I know there's some things that uh, she could specifically lend to us that only a Malawian girl will understand. Mm -hmm. Deep, um, yeah. deep, deep, good, mm -hmm. good. Let's get to some of the, um, some of what we've already been talking about, but what could be seen is um, at issue. We talked about and alluded to what happened with the queen. So mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the negative, the hits that Michelle took while she was in office. And I, I think that would be really interesting to take a look and zoom the in and focus on this. she was called Barack Obama's baby's mama. Mm -hmm. You know, Even that, though she mm -hmm. is married to this man, had been married to him for a number of years before she even started her mm -hmm. family. 
And to me, that was really degrading, the, them calling her that. One of the big ones in along the campaign and him being president was um, a quote where she says, for the first time mm -hmm. in my adult life time, I'm really proud of my country. And mm -hmm. oh, they that was taken so her. far to the left. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 I don't think she was, and, and she says in the book that it was a snippet of what was in yeah, a bigger speech. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But when you just bring it down to just for the first time in my adult lifetime, I am really proud of my country. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what she meant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you had to see it in the context well, of exactly what she was saying not. in order to and really that get that. Commentary. What I remember was her being called in to review a video of herself giving a speech. Because mm -hmm. prior to that, she spoke on her own volition. She didn't have any assistance. She didn't have a speech writer. She was mm -hmm. writing everything herself. And then when, I can't recall who it was, there were two people there, a male and a female, two of I the aides the giving her. Valerie Jarrett, didn't she? Valerie might she, have been one of them. And they were showing Michelle, uh -huh. hey, these are things you should not have done. Looking at her gestures, listening to her words. And she reveals in the book, that was her first time really understanding that she did need someone to Review. And, mm -hmm. I, and, I, and I think what you're alluding to, too, we have this uh, quote, is she's saying, I was female, black, I love that she put female but, first, but, mm -hmm. I was female, mm -hmm. black and strong, mm -hmm. which to certain people, maintaining a certain mindset translated onto, into being an angry mm -hmm. black, black woman, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And then her response even coming after that was, it was another damaging cliche, one that's been forever used to sweep minority women to the perimeter of every room, an unconscious signal not to listen to what we've got to say. Mm -hmm. So I think in tying what you just said, Mamie, um, she had to understand what they were saying when they were trying to allude to her coming mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. as an exactly. angry person. And when she happened to see the video, then she was able to see mm -hmm. that's what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. But it, it, in any other context, we, we would know that we are oftentimes just labeled the angry black woman because mm -hmm. you don't want to hear what we have to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting. What about even when she was a little girl playing with her cousin and the cousin <laughs> says, you sound like a white girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. That is huge. Mm -hmm. yes. Folks, I mean, who hasn't been through that? I mean, you mm -hmm. could pro there are probably uh, less number of us who haven't heard that than those of us who have. Because even when I was um, in high school, um, I was criticized for wanting to be or sounding like a white girl. And I remember particularly in the 10th grade, raising my hand to ask a question. And I started it off with saying, well, whatever for? And the students just burst out laughing. They just thought that was the most funniest thing, that, that here's this black girl asking, well, whatever for? <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to, Katie, I'm going to turn to you and put you on the spot for a second. Is it, is it alarming to hear that in, in our culture, oftentimes um, we're kind of picked on for, you know, for sounding white or being the white girl in the black group? Yeah, I mean, it's unfair. It's, it's to ask the question like, are you black enough? Or, or you can't be black and educated or, or not even black and educated, but black and use a common vernacular. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's to question a lot of things and it, it, it's not right. I love what you just said. Yeah. It's not so much saying to you, uh, you sound like a white girl. Mm -hmm. It's saying, are you black enough? Or you're not black enough mm -hmm. because black is is being put off to not being able to speak mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. English mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. put sentences together or to be able to make subjects and verbs cooperate mm -hmm. <laughs> in a sentence. Mm -hmm. So I really like that. That's a good way to explain it. Anybody else want to hit on that? Oh, okay, I, I see Claudette's well, turning you know, another you, way. You, <laughs> Go um, ahead. It's the same like the, okay. uh, on that, but what she, what she said about that, the question was pointed and meant as an insult or at least a challenge, but it also came from an earnest place and it had a kernel of something that was confusing for both mm. of them. And they, they seem to be related, but of two different worlds. And then she went on to talk about what her, her mother did, what her parents did about teaching them and buying the dictionaries mm -hmm. and doing everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of our experiences. Even parents that didn't have college educations wanted their children to have them. Mm -hmm. So it was just a standard that they had. They wanted 
to make sure that we were doing and being the best that we could be. I love you brought that up because that's exactly my, my, my walk. Um, I was raised by um, primarily by two older women, my mm -hmm. grandmother and my great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. And in my grandmother's house, you had to make sure <laughs> subjects and verbs were agreeing and to the point where you would have to fix the sentence or you might even get cut, you mm -hmm. know, with a switch. You know, because <laughs> she was serious about education. Exactly. And she knew that that had to come with being able to uh, command the English language. Mm -hmm. And I thank her for that because I ended up being a news anchor. And yes. you certainly <laughs> can't do that mm -hmm. when you can't put it together. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, there, at the time, you may not understand it, but by and by, exactly. you do. Mm -hmm. exactly. um, and then another thing that I had marked here at large, not just her, but saying this in a quote, there's an age old maxim in the black community. You've got to be twice as good mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. half as far. Mm -hmm. As for the first African-American family in the White House, we were being viewed as representatives of our race. That's true. Mm -hmm. I, I'm over here to the, <laughs> to the left. Shirley just cruise. jumped out at that one. We took a cruise right after the election, and we were in the Bahamas and Jamaica and all, and oh, the people were just elated. Mm -hmm. And they just, you know, thought it was the best thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they said, a black man president, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they figured he's going to do great things. I said, we believe so too, and he did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So often we're, we're representatives of our race. Right. What do black people think? Right. I don't know every black person. <laughs> I don't know what they think. But I can tell you what I think, but That's we get true. that a lot. Well, what, 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 what do they think or what did they... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's an obligation that you never signed up for, but it's exactly. yours. Uh -huh. I mean, it's the same. Oh, like, yeah. I'm asked every African. You know, exactly. Like, <laughs> any question about Africa, I'm asked. But I just, I realize um, it's not so much of a burden, but it's an honor to kind of change the narrative or educate people about different things and give them a different perspective of who you are, where you're from. And that's what um, the Obamas managed to do really mm -hmm. gracefully. Yes. yes. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. I like that. Let's talk about uh, some of her, uh, Michelle's personal struggles that we may have been surprised with. I hadn't heard about the infertility. No, I hadn't. I think I, had. I did. You had heard I about just that? Just briefly, mm -hmm. right. Okay. okay. But then, uh, as you said, heard mm -hmm. from other no, source, media sources. Yeah, okay. It might not have been accurate, but she mm -hmm. herself tells us very vividly about those oh, problems yeah. that mm -hmm. they were having. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. I and, thought it was really ahead. brave that she mentioned her miscarriage because so many, and, and then she mentioned that when she talked to friends about it, she had no idea how many women opened up about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's just something that's stigmatized, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's something that should be discussed. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. But through in vitro, they were able to have yeah. both the girls yeah. right. uh -huh. and, and go Leah on. And yeah. So. Right. yeah, that was yeah. wonderful. And then another thing was I didn't realize that she and Barack had to go through marriage counseling. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What a commitment from both of them to go. Mm -hmm. and want to work on their marriage. I mean, you could imagine mm -hmm. that politics is putting pressure on the Politics you know, puts a lot of marriage. pressure. There are a mm -hmm. lot of divorces mm -hmm. uh, among politicians because and, yeah. of what they and have to experience. And him as a, as a male. I don't uh -huh. want to stereotype males. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, I was just proud to that read he that to he was it. amenable to, mm -hmm. uh, to fixing the marriage, to just uh, being a supportive husband to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was just good to read those kinds of things about. Barack Obama. Because in those girls' young, very formative years, he was away so much. Right. Uh -huh. Let's just give a minute to talk about Sasha and Malia. Mm. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, oh. I love, I love, I think it was Sasha who was at the tennis match. <laughs> yes. And the comment that was made right. uh, yeah. where the about, lady had asked about them. So it must them. be really difficult for you or something, wasn't it like it that? It was about, are you, are, afraid? You afraid, are you afraid? Are you afraid of being killed or something right. like that, wasn't yeah. it? When she was there and how she answered it. Oh, she oh, answered smart. it very yes, smart. Sir. Very yeah. smart. No, I don't think about my death every day if that's yeah, right. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what she said. <laughs> Thank you, Katie, because we were, awesome. we're exactly. shooting for it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that, um, before the end, because we're wrapping up, you know, Mamie said to me, she was like, I just don't know of an hour we didn't talk about it. I mean, we no, can't, there's but lot. there's, there's a lot more. to talk about. There's there a lot really more to is. talk about. I think we've scratched a little. Um, we've got just a few minutes left, but I want to give each of you, since you've um, done this in your book club, Readers and Writers, Inc., 
you've read Becoming and you've been and you've been discussing it in your own book club. Are there other things that you want to make sure that we've had a chance to discuss here on AWARE? Well, back to Toni Morrison, my other idol, the person whom I uh, uh, idolized. She was the f first African-American to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. She's the one who developed these characteristics of the African-American novel. And I mentioned one characteristic, the oral quality, that ability to blend street language or the cultural language of our race with the mainstream English. And then she said the other quality is that the novel should have a chorus, like a Greek chorus, someone commenting on the action. And often that commentator is the writer, it's the narrator, mm -hmm. in this case, Michelle Obama. But it, it is we, as the readers of the book, we are the chorus, amening the things exactly. and responding mm -hmm. to the things that she says. And then the other feature, the ancestor, someone with wisdom, and we see a lot of ancestors yes. in this novel, oh, yeah. the uncles, the aunts. But she says someone that serves as a person to give advice, a kind of advisor, a consultant, someone to help guide that person through, through life. And I think we see quite a bit of that mm -hmm. in, the, in the novel. As our young ladies, too, are left, younger ladies, <laughs> <laughs> say they could relate to the early formidable years of Michelle. In, in where you are right now in your season, as you relate to that a little bit more than probably we do a little bit more season and past uh, the formal years of her life, if you had a chance to ask her a question, have you ever thought about what that would be? Did that prompt you to say, mm, I wish I could ask her about this, that, or the other thing as you go forward in becoming? Mm. If it's a tough question, <laughs> that gave me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, really? You have a lot of questions you could ask her <laughs> and take notes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot. I like something that you said, Chrissy. You were saying that you learned a lot about our uh, our first lady, yours too, um, but you were caught wondering about your own. Your own. Mm -hmm. And so I think that more than answers the question. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to give you all a ch you two a chance specifically if you had something, you had an opportunity to ask her a question. I would probably ask her um, where to go looking for good mentors because I feel like this book is full of really good mentors and she is constantly within, like after she graduates and she's working as a lawyer but she's upset, she's not happy with it, she wants to make that transition, her mom saying, mm, you have money, maybe wait for happiness later. But she goes and seeks out these mentors, kind of through interviewing, kind of through just putting her nose out there. But I would probably just Tell her everything. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Every, yeah. 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 All yeah. of my dreams, all of my hopes, and see if she could put me in the path of a good mentor. Mm -hmm. I like um, something that Michelle does um, in her book. She says, well, I like a lot of stuff she did, so I don't want to just put it to one thing. But the thing that I love about becoming is I think she challenges us all at the very end of this. Yes. She says, the more I told my story, the more my voice settled into itself. I like my story. What's your story? Yeah. And so I wanted to bring that quote up because you can share your story at hashtag I am becoming with her. But the thing about it is I just like her saying, OK, it's not about me. It's about you, too. Mm -hmm. You have stories. Yes, she rose through the ranks. She was becoming and is becoming and became the first lady. And she's still becoming. But what are you becoming? Mm -hmm. And so I think. Right now, I um, want to kind of give you all a chance to kind of just kind of meditate and marinate on that as we look forward. What are we becoming? She, this may be the same from the same it section. Mm -hmm. She says on 269, I felt a new ease, a new ownership of my voice. That's what figures prominently in this novel, to voice. Mm -hmm. uh, because she met these women that, are, that was in the first chapter, I think. Mm -hmm. And she said they were all very comfortable in their own skin, basically, I'm paraphrasing, and using their voices. They had voices, they had found their voices, discovered their voices, and they were using their voices. Yes. And that impressed her. And she talks about pushing past all the stereotypes and the misogynistic views that she encountered. So I think that's, we have a lesson in being womanish, as Alice mm -hmm. Walker would call it. Being womanish. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandmother used to call me womanish. Stop being so womanish. That is from our <laughs> exactly. culture. That meant you had the audacity to try to act grown up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so I think uh, that's what I, I'm taking away from this book. She learned mm -hmm. how to be womanish from her mother, 
from her aunt. Do you remember the aunt mm -hmm. who taught her piano lessons? Robbie. With the broken Robbie. key on the right. piano. Exactly. Yeah. She learned how to be womanish. Uh, when she went for the recital and she didn't have that broken down to yeah. mm -hmm. piano and she could not find middle C. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Because she started off with the broken down <laughs> panel, exactly. piano and then when she did the recital there was a beautiful <laughs> great baby grand with, grand with all the keys and it was right. like, where's middle C? <laughs> but remember what Robbie did? She came up and very calmly pointed to middle C and mm -hmm. she... That's that mentor. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what you that's need. That, uh, did yeah. you have a comment, Chrissy? Just speaking of um, her voice, I think that's what I'd ask, like, what is her inner dialogue like? Okay. You know, what conversations is she having with herself? Because I imagine for her to have been this resilient, she has to be having an impeccable conversation with herself. Mm -hmm. You know, she has to be saying, you know, Michelle, just keep going. Michelle, you can do this. Michelle, let's try this. Michelle, don't listen to that. You know, um, and maybe just be able to adopt some of that. I think uh, it takes a lot of self-love and self encouragement to be able to overcome all the things that she was able to. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely with the help of everyone around her, and I'm sure everyone just was speaking, you know, words of, you know, affirmation to her, you know, her brother, her, mo her, her mother, her um, father. So I'm sure those things are the things mm -hmm. that, you know, she yes. recites in her head for her to be able to be as strong as she is. And we need to say that to, to other people as well. We need to give other people those affirmations because it's not just about us. It's about, or not just about me, it's about us. Yes. We need to be, we need to be affirming each other as, as women, True. as Americans, True. as, as people. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I kind of take away from this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she, she talks said, about all these women in her life who affirmed yeah. her. Yes. The sisterhood. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. The sisterhood. Yeah. Exactly. I love that part. Yeah. And I love what she says, when they go low, we go high. No. Yes. 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 <laughs> With the bullying and yes. how she had decided yes. that that's yeah. how she was right. going to do with it. And I love how in the beginning of the book, she's talking about, am I good enough? Am yes. I good enough? Mm -hmm. And somewhere in the middle, going towards the end, she's finally realizing, I'm yes. good enough. Good enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And how she made it the People's White House. Remember how she had the garden right. and the children from all over could come and work in that garden. And everything she did in terms of the, the platform that she had, mm -hmm. working with children and childhood obesity mm -hmm. and, and working out and having healthy bodies and strong mm -hmm. bodies in the garden and working with veterans and mm -hmm. all these different organizations and things that she tried to get started and, and, and do. And we haven't even talked about Barack. Exactly. <laughs> and all the things right. and wonderful. And, and don't forget how she came it, but... home and had that cup of tea or whatever it was that she, she became human again. She was yes. the first lady. Oh, yes. that was beautiful. But she yeah. encouraged us to write our stories yes. and the very part of it when she says your story is what you have, what you will always have. It is something to own. So he's, she encouraged us to own our own stories. Yes. Mm -hmm. Love it a lot. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Less than 30 seconds left. Anybody wow. else have anything to say before we wrap it up? No. You always you got something to say, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've said it all. You've, you've said it all. Okay. Yes. We, yeah. Read the book, too. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. You took yes. the words out of my yes. mouth. Yes. This is not yes. a book just for women. And we yes. had somebody's husband on the set say in the green room, his wife won't let him read it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not just for girls. This is for you. Thank you, ladies, for being thank here. You. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's all the time we have for now. We want to thank all of our guests joining us here in the studio. And a special thanks to Readers and Writers, Inc. And if you have not read Michelle Obama's New York Times bestseller, Becoming, I highly recommend it. Perhaps you will be inspired to tell your own story. In fact, former First Lady Michelle Obama encourages you to share your story at hashtag I am becoming. We appreciate Michelle Obama for telling her story. After all, we are all still becoming. Until the next time, I'm Dee Dee Sharp saying, stay informed and stay aware.